Hello everyone, Clive Adams here, and we are taking the time to look back 10 years ago at the World Bowls Championships that was held in Lockleys in South Australia, a home World Bowls for Australia and a gold rush of medals for Australia, including the World Singles Championship for Karen Murphy. How are you, Kaz? Yeah, good, Clive. Thanks for having me. 10 years ago, who would have thought, eh? Yeah, look, I, I remember it really, really well. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like 10 years ago. It's funny. It's, um, I, mean, I remember everything about that trip and, uh, you know, one of the best trips I've ever, ever been on, uh, on, a, on an international uh, event sort of thing. But um, yeah, 10 years ago is pretty quick, doesn't it? You know, the time, time flies. So uh, yeah, it was, um, it was one of the big ones for me. So a home, a home World Bowls to start with, it probably gives you the best chance to have a wonderful preparation. Tell us about your preparation going into the event and um, had you had much time to spend on the greens at, at Lockleys? And, you know, it, I guess it gives you that extra little bit of chance when it's at home. Yeah, it, it was, mate. And, you know, you, you, you may remember it was a, a sort of... Um, a tough couple of years for me in the lead up to uh, World Bowl. So, you know, I missed out on Delhi in 2010. I uh, resigned from the squad in, in 2011 and, and was sort of going through a bit of a hard time, I guess, you know, and then Glass came back on board as, as the uh, the Jackaroos coach um, and sort of had a bit of a chat to me and said, you know, do you want to come back? Um, and I was like, um, one, I suppose it made me reassess, you know, did I want to still play international bowls? And the answer was yes. And there was still a lot of... Uh, a lot of things for me that I wanted to, to uh, tick off as far as, um, uh, you know, achievements and things. So um, it was a wonderful environment. I remember, um, you know, Glass said it was a really the start of that really positive Australian Jackaroos culture um, that, that Glass sort of uh, laid down and um, a really lovely environment to be in and, and grow in. And, um, yeah, it was probably, um, I don't know, it was probably from that moment on, I think when Glass came on board, it was, you know, I probably had my best results ever internationally from there because it was just such a, uh, a wonderful environment to be a part of. And the preparation was, was great. You know, like I, I remember the day that um, I got announced as the singles player for, for that team um, in a wonderful team. There was some, there's some awesome players in, in that team. Um, I was ready to, ready to take it, you know, by the ball, by the horn sort of thing. And um, yeah, I was super keen to, to put every, you know, didn't leave any stone unturned in preparation to, to try and win that elusive uh, world singles. So you, you work your way through the qualifying and you're, and you're there and you, you're facing uh, defending champion Val Smith, who, you know, superstar of the sport, as we know from New Zealand, um, someone you are obviously pretty familiar with. Yeah, well, I actually lost to her in the sectional play. I'm, I'm pretty sure I played her. Maybe it might have even been the first day of play. 21-20. Yeah. It was on the ditch, ditch rink um, and I wasn't too, uh, you know, sort of worried about it, you know, like I knew I got close to her and, uh, you know, um, I just didn't get over the line sort of thing, but uh, I knew if I sort of was able to, um, you just got to qualify, don't you? You know, it was, um, you've just got to get through that qualifying stage um, and, you know, I felt that I probably and knew I'd probably gain a bit of momentum and get better and better as the event went on sort of thing you know just getting that real singles mindset and and that you know the first bowl second bowl just sort of like robotic sort of mindset um you know it, it, I actually love singles I absolutely love and I still love singles like some people yeah. don't um I just I do and it's I just feel like it's just it's a you know you're in it for the long haul you know, you, you have to be really quite mentally mentally tough and, and patient and resilient um, and sort of be a good scrapper when things aren't going well, which, uh, you know, it can be a really great place when you're playing well and it can be a really, really lonely place when things aren't going so well. And all so. that can happen in one game, can't it? You know, those moments can happen all yeah. through one game, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, qualifying was great and, yeah, got end up getting getting through uh, the qualifying stages. So that was that was the first step. So both players spoke of the wind in, uh, in, in their interviews beforehand uh, and there was a bit of talk from the commentary team about how the rink was a bit difficult. So... Take us through that. What was your mindset going in? Was there any thought of that the rink was a bit difficult and did that affect your, perhaps your game plan at all? Well, well I knew Val was fairly comfortable with playing in conditions like that as well. So, um, you know, I knew that that wouldn't face her too much, but I, I relished playing in conditions like, like it was on that day at Lockleys. It was 
it was probably running a good 17, I think. Um, the wind was quite fluky. There were stands and it was coming in, at, you know, different ends and things like that. But I actually just relished playing in, in those conditions and, and backed myself sort of thing. So, you know, you, it's the conditions where you can't try and be too perfect. You know, you, you yep. just got to knuckle down and, and, um, and be content with sort of being around about sort of the thing. So um, I was pretty confident going into the, into the final, I have to say. It was a home crowd. It was, it was a great crowd there. Um, and it was always going to be a, a hard game. Um, I remember my watch broke uh, the morning of the World Singles final, and I was like, because I'm very ducks in a row sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> so Paul, Paul went and, uh, and took it off to the jewellers, and he couldn't fix it, and he just sort of put it back together, and Rookie sort of gave it back to me and said, there you go, your watch is fixed, you know, and glasses in there, you know, sweating, sweating bullets going, oh, God, something, something's, yep. something's gone wrong, Kaz is, you know, like there's a duck out of line. <laughs> Um, and it hung on, like my watch abs, uh, hung on that game, you know, didn't fall off in the middle of it or something. But um, still got it. Uh, yeah, I've still got the watch. I don't wear it anymore. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. Um, I remember getting ready in the room, and um, our one of our games was I was watching the boys play. I think um, on on the iPad um, in the game in preparation before I had to leave because it was like a lunchtime final. So um, yeah, went went with glass, and um, you know he was. He was always really great ringside to have as a coach. I had him the whole time, my whole inter international career as a singles player. And um, I remember, you know, we, we were, he's a pretty funny, funny guy, Glass. You know, there'd be planes going over and we'd be hoping she'd miss and she's lining up on the mat. And we're like, where's that plane going to? Oh, that's probably going to Perth. Um, you know, wonder what the flight number is and all this sort of stuff, just trying to talk about anything but you know the game <laughs> yeah absolutely so um you get out there one thing i did notice is uh the great sandy wallace was the marker in the final and of course both of us have got to know sandy quite well over the years with her involvement in bpl and all the wonderful work that she does so great to see sandy uh, uh on the show rink there yeah and uh you know she's the best you know she's one of the best markers that you could ever have sort of thing so it was really nice to sort of um you know, to share that with her as well. You know, I'm good mates with Sandy, have been for a lot of years and that we played state bowls against each other for years and years. And uh, now she's obviously a head of the uh, ITOs and things like that. But yeah, it was really nice to sort of have her um, involved in, in the moment as well. And you are one that likes to ask questions early, aren't you? In, in all your games, it comes through. I know we've, we've probably talked about this before, but you are one that likes to ask questions early. I do, I do. I don't really care for the answers too many times, Clive. Yeah. It's more of a uh, uh, this is this is uh, you know this is my rink sort of thing. So it's a yeah, it's just a thing I always did, you know, and probably still do, you know, to be honest. Like this is you know try and dominate a little bit sort of thing. So um, yeah, just ask a lot of questions, and and Sandy knows me very well, so she knew what she was in for. <laughs> <laughs> um, tactically, you both started on opposite sides of the rink. Was that something that surprised you? Um, uh, there was there was talk that I know Val started on her backhand, and the, again, listening to the commentary team, sort of saying that that hand had been the the more difficult side of the rink to play. Did it surprise you that you started on opposite sides? Um, I, I was pretty open minded going into what side we were going to play because it, it is so fluky over there. You know, I think, and I think you have to go into games like that. Um, it's very changeable. You know, like, yeah, you know, the, the side of the rink for me in singles is the best one to play is the side that you can, in the roll-up, that you can have a really good look at. I don't care about my weight too much in a roll-up, but it's the side of the rink or the, even the hand, it's maybe not even the same side of the rink, that you can get back to the centre line most easily yeah. on. So, and that might be forehand around the clock or backhand around the clock. But um, I think you've just got to go in with a plan and back yourself sort of thing. Um, you know, your weight will come. If I can find a line on, on, you know, on a certain hand, then that's the hand I'm going to play sort of thing. So, but then you need also to be quite flexible because conditions can change. Let's, uh, let's test your memory a little bit because it was, it was N4 where you basically played four perfect bowls. You played four identical bowls. Val was able to remove a couple of them. She drove and took two bowls straight out with a split to take two of them out. You put another two right back on the jack. Early in a match, does that give you a nice boost of confidence to say, well, I've just played four bowls identically, you know, I'm feeling the conditions? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we spoke about like the singles is such a rhythm game, you know, like it's it's just a you're, as I said, you're, you know, it's a war of attrition. You're in it for the long haul and it's a journey, you know, sort of thing. So that, that rhythm and that, you know, for me is like feeling it, like feeling it is really important. And on a day like that, it was probably pretty 
pretty tricky to be able to, to do that. And um, there was a lot of ends where I, where I wasn't able to do that. Um, so it was not nice to do it on one end, I suppose. We'll talk but, about um, one of those because it was uh, it was 17, 10 and, uh, you know, 21's within reach. You know, you, you're on the springboard. One end can get you there. And then you played a bit of a loose one and Val grabs a four and suddenly it's back to 17, 14. What's, what's going through the mind? What, do, what are you thinking at that stage? Um, you know, it's easy to say we ignore the score lines, but that pressure then comes back on, doesn't it? Well, I can tell you what was going through my teammates' minds because they still remind me to this day, they might have been out a little bit late the night before and they were in the stands. It was a pretty hot day that day. And uh, they were like, oh, for God's sake, Kaz, hurry up, hurry up and win, you know, sort of thing. So they were, uh, they were feeling the effects of the sun. Um, okay, we'll go with that. At a, at a late night. So, um, yeah, so... It was, yeah, I did drop it. I did drop four and, um, you know, I think you just got to hang tough. You know, like I, I was still, I still felt like I had, um, you know, the momentum sort of going into that, in, you know, from, from that moment sort of thing, even though I dropped the four, um, you still back myself sort of thing to, you know, to, to get over the line sort of thing. It was a long game. Like it was, it was flying that, that, that uh, green and, and Val's not the quickest player either. Um, so yeah, it was, um, it was a long journey, but um, and then a couple of moments where yeah, starting to get a bit. Yeah, a couple of moments where you sort of had to, you you couldn't bear to look. Um, I know it was a nineteen fifteen. Val draws the shot and keeps it going, um, but then uh, a few ends later, you're uh, you're twenty seventeen and you you're on the front of the jack. You got to decide what to do with your remaining bowls because you don't really want to put another one right next to it. And I think I there was a little bit of a conversation between you and Glass, sort of saying, "Well, I just wanted to get another one around the place," you know. Um, yep. the last thing you want to do was land Jack high. Yeah, I remember. I remember that end. It was Matt back short, short end, and uh, yeah, I played a pretty good one with my first bowl, I think. Uh, and then, um, and she said I played a little bit of a loose one. So yeah, I think I, I sort of yeah didn't go. I just decided we weren't going to go anywhere near it, sort of thing. So um, yeah, was overstanding with Glass uh, when she played her last bowl. There was a lot of discussion with Dave, her coach, um, and Glass and I just sort of um, sort of stood there and I, I remember you know when she she missed wide I think um when she played her last one and I just was I was, couldn't believe it you know like it was just uh it was I had I gave Glass the biggest hug I think where there's a few tears I think Glass always said he had sunscreen in his in his eye yep, he had yep, a few <laughs> fair bit of sunscreen in his eye that, over those uh, finals days but uh with everyone but um yeah one of the just one of the life childhood dream you know lifetime dream I, I think and um you know to to have won the world singles it was it was one of the best feelings in my bowls career that I've had to look at your reaction and we, we've got comparisons we can make these days because we've got the comparison of your reaction to Ellen Ryan's bowl at the uh, most recent Commonwealth Games where I think you did an entire lap of the venue uh, as you got back to them. But um, your reaction in this case, it, it seemed like a real look of satisfaction rather than necessarily pure jubilation. It was a very controlled sort of uh, satisfied look. Yeah, well, as I probably alluded to at the start of the interview, it was a it was a really tough couple of years, you know, like after missing out on Delhi and and sort of getting myself back to you know back into the team and and sort of you know it was it was a very satisfying win, um, I have to say, and you know, and I, I worked really hard in the lead up to to World Champs, you know, and to, I guess to come away after winning the singles with two two out of two gold medals was was really, really satisfying. And there was probably a bit of relief there too, to be honest, mate, you know, like just to, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a monkey on the back. It was just, uh, you know, a couple of, couple of hard years, I think. And then just to realize that, uh, yep, I still, that's still what I wanted to do. And then, you know, I've achieved on the biggest stage, you know, there hasn't been many people that won a world singles. Um, and uh, the people that you share it with are the people that you, you know, the, the memories that I look back now 10 years later and remember who I shared it with. It was, you know, sharing, you know, with, with my teammates, you know, with Glass, uh, with Dalsey, with Faye Luke, uh, who's no longer with us. You know, my mum was there, my husband was there, um, my best mate was there. Um, yeah, it was all pretty cool in a, on a home ground. So, yeah, great memories. And then to walk away with, Yes, this, there it is. Um, yeah, the wall. I haven't got it framed yet, but um, and my triples is the same. I haven't got it framed yet, but uh, beautiful. Yep, one day, one day we'll get it framed. That is beautiful, and of course, but let's not forget, you're still world champion. <laughs> I am. I am. I am until next year, so it'll be uh, <laughs> eleven years next year. So yeah, um, 
went on to uh went on to win the back to back world singles as as we know. But um, yeah, first one was pretty special, that's for sure, in Adelaide. Yeah, look, Kaz, uh, you're a legend of the sport in every sense of the word. Um, you're you're a, been a remarkable servant to the sport. You're still doing that now in uh, in your role with the Jackaroos and and giving back to um, to the sport. Um, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations again, and uh, look. Well, champ for just a little bit longer, and uh, it'll be interesting to see who can take your uh, your title. But thanks very much for joining me, and thanks for uh, having a walk down memory lane with me. It's been nice to relive it. Thanks, thanks, Clive.